Oh hi, didn't see you there. So I just got done filming a video that was 10 things that every recording engineer needs to run a successful business that's not gear. Well, now let's talk about gear. So what do you actually need if you want to get started? I narrowed it down to 10 things and these aren't super specific, but these are 10 areas that you're gonna need to think about if you want to create a recording studio in your house or even upscale all of this to like a full-fledged recording studio just like what I run. First and foremost, unless you're a completely analog studio, in which case this is a totally different conversation, you're gonna need a computer. Basically the conversation starts here. Do you go with a tape machine or a computer? Obviously there's hybrid setups anywhere in between, but most of the time if we're talking home recording studios, entry level professional spaces, a tape machine is not gonna come into play right off the bat. So you're gonna need a computer. I think we get caught up in the details of what you actually need in a computer a little too much. I used to worry so much about the machine itself. Honestly, we're doing audio. We don't have to worry so much. Like the stuff we're doing is lightweight. That said, think about what you're using your computer for and the type of music that you're making. If you're actually recording music, people in some kind of space recording simultaneously, there's not a lot happening under the hood. You're just recording audio. What you need is fast hard drives and a decently fast processor. You do not need the top of the line here. Even if you start to incorporate a lot of virtual instruments, 16 to 24 gigs of RAM is more than enough. If you can go more, go more. That's just gonna make the longevity of your machine that much better and upgradable in the future. But if you're limited to 16 gigs of RAM, you can still do a whole lot with that. Whether that's Mac or PC, doesn't matter. I think the ecosystem depends more how you use it and it doesn't really matter in the end if you're Windows or PC. I'm Mac because everything I have is Mac and it makes sense for me. That said, everything you have is a Windows machine, stick with that, it does not matter. When it comes down to it, few things that I like in a machine when I'm looking for something, a decently fast processor, it doesn't have to be the top of the line. I'm not a gamer, I'm not concerned with that. I don't need a graphics card that's crazy, although eventually there's some truth to the fact that even what we're doing in the recording industry can be utilized by graphics processors. Having that upgradeability may be something you wanna consider, maybe not. A decent processor, middle of the road, 16 gigs of RAM should get you really, really far. I know pro level studios who are operating on six, seven, eight year old Mac minis. Number two, you're gonna need recording software. There's a ton of options down there. And if you're interested in what those options are, I have a series, Pro Tools Fanboy Tries, <laughs> where I try just about every doll that I can get my hands on. I came up in the Pro Tools world, having worked in and around a whole lot of different studios. It's what I was trained on, it's what I know best, it's what I'm the fastest at. But if you're just starting, and you're gonna work mainly by yourself or in and around your own environment, you don't plan on working with other studios, Pro Tools may not be the right answer for you. And that's fine. Reaper can be free to try it out, but it's darn affordable even if you pay for it. Studio One is a solid option. One that I have really grown to like. Cubase, really powerful if you're gonna be programming a lot of things using virtual instruments. Take a look, do some research, see what's right for you. If you want, check out my videos. I'll link a couple in a card up here. I really don't think it matters what you pick as long as you pick something and learn it inside and out. And ultimately, you're not locked in. If you made a wrong choice, you can move to something else. You need an audio interface. The right answer here will depend on your use case. What are you gonna be doing? Do you have a larger space and you're gonna be recording 16 or 32 inputs at a time? Are you just gonna have a small studio where maybe one or two inputs does you just fine? Or how about something where you can grow? I've got a couple small interfaces here. The Focusrite Vocaster is actually a crazy powerful little unit, although it catches dust like nobody's business. If you're doing a couple different things, but it's mainly vocal centric, this thing sounds pretty good and has the added benefit of being able to use it as like a streaming platform. Onboard DSP, onboard effects, it's kind of dumbed down. You don't need a whole lot of knowledge to get up and running with something like this. And there's functionality built in. On the flip side of it, 
you have something like the Universal Audio stuff. A little bit more expensive, a little bit more under the hood, a little more to know. Obviously, there's a whole lot of options in the affordable interface category. A few questions you need to ask yourself, what are you gonna be using this for? How many inputs do you need? Do you need monitor outputs? Do you need the box to also be able to control your monitors? Do you need a talkback? This does all of that. This does not. You can kind of get around it. A box like this also has the added benefit of having optical in. So now the two XLRs that you had before all of a sudden can turn into 10 and now you can record drum sets. Things to think about. Number four is microphones. You're gonna need something to actually capture audio if you exist wholly in the digital world and you don't need one. But I imagine at some point as a recording studio, you're gonna need a microphone for something. The first nice mic I ever bought was this MicTech CV4. This thing bats way above its weight class as far as tube condensers goes. Other popular options are the Shure SM7B. It's basically a household name at this point. The Shure SM57, which you can surprisingly do a whole lot with, and was actually the very first video I posted to YouTube years ago. If you wanna see how bad my filmmaking skills were back then, go check that out. There's a lot you can do even with the cheapest of microphones. That said, if you wanna get into like the pro level of doing things, you need to spend at least a few hundred dollars to get there. That's not to say that records haven't been made with really, really cheap mics, but as far as longevity goes, build quality, knowing that thing's gonna stick around for a while and be like a decent investment, you're probably looking at the two, $300 mark at a minimum to have a decent mic to record vocals or voiceovers or whatever that might be. The SM7, as cliche as it is, is a good workhorse mic. It can do vocals, it can do acoustic guitar and sound fantastic. It can be a snare mic. There's not a lot you can put it on that that thing does not sound good, but it is really, really low output. And that's where your choice of interface really comes into play and how much gain you can feed it. See, all these things are related. Number five is a good set of headphones, whether that's for you to mix on or for your clients to wear during tracking. Obviously those two different use cases can yield two different results when you're looking at what to get. I'll link down below a couple of my favorite sets of headphones. One specifically for recording. It's hard to beat the Audio-Technica ATH-50Xs. I think that's the mark. I haven't, almost haven't memorized. Or the Sony 75. Both cheap options that you could absolutely mix on. Are they the greatest sounding headphones? No, but that's not the point. You want something honest that you can get used to that's repeatable. Because if something happens to your headphones, you want to be able to replace them and have it be pretty close to what you knew before. As far as tracking headphones, I love the direct sound stuff, the super isolating headphones. You don't have to worry about click bleed with something like this that can really be the bane of your existence when you get down to actually doing work. Number six, if you decide to go with it, studio monitors. The whole idea with studio monitors is to give you an accurate representation of what is happening in your recording. Our studio monitors will play with your room and we'll get to a need to treat the room a little bit later with the choice in monitor you're getting, you don't have to spend a ton of money. There are people who get really, really good results with really, really cheap monitors. Ultimately, the option for your monitor, pick the speaker that is appropriate for your size of room. Don't get something way too big for your space and don't get something too small either. Right along with the studio monitors, getting something like room correction software is huge, especially in the home recording studio. Getting something like Sonarworks or any other room correction software is huge. It was a game changer for me when I first got it. It shouldn't be the only crutch that you lean on to fix the issues in your room, but it can make a big, big difference. It's one of those things now that's hard for me to work without. And I wish I would have done it from day one. <laughs> Number seven, cables. You're gonna need a lot of cables. Even when you think you have the simplest of simple setups, you're gonna need a lot of cables. Do you need to go out and buy the most expensive cable that you have ever found? Absolutely not. You can get a lot done with a very, very cheap cable. Whether that's a guitar cable, an XLR, a speaker cable. What I will say, there's a whole lot of tests about audio quality and buying a super expensive cable versus an Amazon Basics or something like that. 
And feel free to check out those videos. But I think the one thing that we don't talk about nearly enough is the reason you would buy an expensive cable is because of its build quality. That said, you can make just about anything work, but here's the question. How many times are you gonna set it up? How many times are you gonna wrap that cable? Is it built well enough to withstand the use of an everyday studio? That's where I would spend the money. Getting something that may not be the best of the best, but it's definitely not the cheapest, but you know it's not gonna fall apart the first few times you use it. Studio furniture. You need something to put your gear on. And that could be the very, very simplest form of a desk. I use a rolling desk and have everything basically in a rack that I made myself and that's the hub for my studio. I'm kind of using like a glorified nurse's station that wheels around the room, but I love it. It's a sit stand desk. Everything else stays where it needs to stay and I just move my keyboard and mouse up and down essentially. It's fantastic. I'll link that below if you're at all interested. It kind of makes the whole setup a whole lot easier. That said, there's a lot of really good options for furniture output. If you're not into DIYing and you can't build yourself, Output makes really cool studio furniture that serves a purpose and is really affordable at the same time. And none of this is sponsored, by the way. None of it. <laughs> Next thing you're gonna need is acoustic treatment. If you're in a room and a home, chances are that home sounds like trash. Sorry, it's just kind of the way it is. Normally rooms are built very symmetrically in homes or residential spaces in general. The ceilings are really, really low and really, really reflective. You may have carpet, you may have hardwood. The main thing to think about, and you don't have to spend an absolute ton of money here. If you just wanna get some work done, Focus on your point of first reflections. Easiest way you can do this is to hold up a mirror along the wall. And when you can sit in your listening position and move that mirror along the wall and you see your speaker, that's your point of first reflection. Put a sound trap there. It could be something as easy as going to your closest Lowe's or Home Depot if you're in the States and getting some Ruxel or Rockwell, whatever it's called where you are, some safe and sound insulation and making your own traps out of that and wrapping fabric around it. There's a whole lot of options where if you're even the slightest bit handy, you can get this done on a budget. The one thing I will say, do not go and buy the egg crate stuff. It doesn't work. It may dissipate some high frequency stuff, but when it gets to the low frequency energy, you're, you're not doing a thing. I'm sorry, it doesn't work. And oftentimes it's more expensive than the stuff that actually does work. Number 10, the last thing you're gonna need is instruments and other tools to do your job. Are you someone who works with bands? Would it make your job easier to have a house kit there that you know sounds good? For me, it was huge. It's like that first bit of quality control that you know they're gonna at least sound this good. If you can control a certain number of variables, it's so much easier for you down the line. I keep guitars, I keep amps, guitar cabs, pianos, keyboards. I have a lot of stuff. You may not need that, but think about the things in the niche that you're trying to work within what do those people need as tools and what might you be able to provide that's not crazy expensive, but something easy that you can control the quality of so that you know your tracks aren't gonna be hindered by this one tool. All right guys, I didn't wanna get too specific with each one of these recommendations, but I will put some of my recommendations in the description below if you're curious what those might be. If you wanna check out all the gear I use, I'm gonna have that in the description down below. If you like this one, hit that like button, hit subscribe if you like what we're doing here. If you want, check out the Patreon, where I have a lot of behind the scenes stuff and we're actually gonna be starting to send you guys session stems so you can practice mixing. I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I'll see you in the next one.